So this is very known, I think, if you, if you play with Kalman, you, you know that. And what is uh, very related to uncertainty quantification, I think, is, is this problem. So now I use a good QNR ratio. So the good QNR ratio is 1, and here I use, I divide by 10 the Q and the R. And here I multiply by 10 both Q and R. And these are the, the results. So you can see that we have a very good estimate of the, the state of the system. So basically, we, we reach to the best, uh, to, to the good RMSE. Uh, so the state of the system, the mean, is very well estimated. But the problem, so it's exactly the same. We have exactly the same results in mean here, in mean reconstruction. But the, you can see the confidence interval are very different. So in this case, we are underestimating the, the 95 uh, confidence interval. So here we have less than 40% of the red line inside the confidence interval. So this is uh, very bad in data simulation in practice. And here you are overestimating uh, the confidence interval. And this is also very bad. Uh, so you can see that in this very, it, it, it just three slides just to show you the, how, how important it is to, to, to estimate, uh, not only estimate the good ratio, but I think it's very important to estimate really the good value of, of Q and R. And if you have the good value of Q and R, in this case, you, you reach to the, to the best uh, performance. So just a small example to, to show you, a small introduction to, to show you. Uh, uh, so now I come back to my, uh, to my presentation, and this is the plan of my presentation. It was only uh, an introduction. So first I would like to, to, uh, to show you, to remind you, uh, what are the filtering and smoothing methods used in data simulation. Uh, then I will show you the, force, uh, the four methods uh, um, used basically uh, in, in, in the... Um, in the literature of data simulation. Then I put some application of this in different problems, simple problems, but uh, um, you can see the impact of Q and R estimation, and then I, I draw the, the conclusion. Okay. So, um, so basically the, the, the three main algorithm used in data simulation, I, I will go very quickly on that, are uh, different approaches. Uh, the first one is is try to uh, to uh, uh, to make a, a direct optimization of our problem and try to find um, uh, the best uh, trajectory uh, using variational approaches. Uh, so I, I will not use this method because the problem is that it's it's very difficult to 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 get uh, the the covariances, so the error of of our state. And you need also the adjoint uh, model. So um, I prefer to use uh, sequential methods like uh, particle filters or Kalman-based uh, methods. So the particle filter, uh, we talk about this uh, during the last uh, different talks uh, yesterday. And uh, it's optimal in, in theory, but uh, I think uh, for the moment in data simulation, it's still a problem with high dimensional. So I prefer to stay on the Kalman equation uh, as you said, uh, Youssef, uh, yesterday, it's very robust and uh, very convenient and very widely used uh, in data simulation. And here, in, in, at the weekend, they use, uh, they use uh, uh, LATKF, uh, which is a uh, Kalman-based uh, equation. So, and what is nice also is that uh, it's uh, like the particle filter, so it we assume the additive and, and Gaussian uh, assumption given in the nonlinear state space model. Okay, so I will remind you very quickly uh, what is uh, the Kalman uh, equation and um, how it is um, used in, in practice. So basically, if you want to track uh, the state of the system in, in time, so this is a true state of the system uh, in blue. You have noisy observation, okay, here. And uh, and what we do uh, most of the time is uh, that we use a previous analysis. 
So we, we have a different initial condition in, in our previous analysis. For each of the members, we apply the dynamical model. Okay, so we get a, a, a number of, of forecasts and we have this, uh, this spread of, of uh, the model. And um, so most of the time we add uh, uh, an additive and, and Gaussian uh, noise. So we, we add a covariance uh, here in, in Q. So the Q is, uh, is this part. Uh, so we increase artificially uh, the, the spread of, of our forecast. Um, and uh, so basically, Kalman equations are quite simple. So you have two PDF, okay? This this one Gaussian and this one also Gaussian. Uh, given uh, the covariance of, of this one is given by R, and we try to to combine these two uh, these two PDF. So this is the goal of Kalman. And how we can do that is uh, computing the Kalman gain. So if you look at carefully, the Kalman uh, gain is, uh, so it, it, it depends on a kind of ratio between PF and PF plus R, R. And if you look at carefully, PF is taking into account uh, the spread of the forecast and also the Q matrix. So this is a goal what I want to estimate. So if you look at carefully, the K uh, Kalman gain uh, is a kind of ratio between Q and R. And if you remember my first slide, you, now you see uh, how it is important, uh, this, uh, this ratio. And then, uh, basically, XA, which is a result of my Kalman filter, is a combination of the XF and uh, the observation using uh, this Kalman gain. So the Kalman gain is a kind of what is the weight I put in my observation and in my forecast. And it's depending on the Q and R uh, ratio. Okay? So, uh, yes. So before, uh, uh, just, you, just to, to remind you uh, the Kalman equation, and, and here I also want to, to show you something uh, that I will use uh, now. So it is a difference between X, F, and uh, Y. So the difference between uh, the forecast and, and my observation. So in, in data simulation, we call that uh, the innovation. Okay, it's noted, uh, denoted D. For, uh, this is the, the innovation. And uh, so we have, there is a H here because we have to, to, to go to the observational space. So, uh, so basically, uh, if you look at uh, the, the mean and the covariance of, of this, um, of this uh, innovation and the covariance, so you have uh, PF and R. So here you have the information of, of R, and here you have in PF, it's included uh, the, Q, uh, the Q covariance. Okay, so, uh, so people in the, in the 90s, uh, they, they were a lot uh, looking at this covariance uh, of the innovation, and I think the two first articles trying to, to estimate Q and R using the innovation were uh, this one. So these are very, very famous articles in, in data simulation. But in practice, uh, it's very difficult when you use only innovation at time k. This is a time. Uh, it's very difficult to separate and to estimate uh, Q and R. So you can estimate uh, the ratio. Uh, but you cannot estimate uh, exactly the, independently the, the two matrices. And this issue uh, is, is, has been uh, nice, nicely um, pointed out but by uh, this uh, article. So if I use only innovation at time, at time uh, k, it's very difficult to, to estimate jointly uh, q and r. I can estimate the, the, the ratio, but not... Uh, not the, the true uh, Q and R matrices. So that's why uh, people were uh, um, interesting in, in using uh, different innovations. So this is uh, the first article very famous by uh, this guy, this French guy, uh, Desrosiers. Um, so the idea is, is try to, to use different uh, innovation. So I will call that uh, innovation of the observation minus forecast and here, the observation minus analysis. 
So basically, it's observation minus forecast here, observation minus the, the result of your Kalman uh, filter. Um, so if you if you look at uh, uh, if you compute the empirical um, uh, covariance matrix of uh, of this um, uh, of this uh, innovation, so this is a classic innovation, in fact. And uh, so you, you, you see the same equation as previously. And what is nice is that if you compute the cross uh, co covariance between uh, these two innovations, you, you are going to, to R. The, the result is R. So here, if we use uh, these two innovations, you are able to, to find a, a system with two equations and uh, two unknown uh, variables. So now it's possible to estimate Q and R. So in practice, uh, it's it's not so easy to to get the good uh, uh, to estimate directly the, the Q. So uh, people are trying to estimate um, what we call the inflation uh, behind uh, this uh, PF. So we want to artificially increase uh, the, the spread of of uh, PF, and that's what is uh, used. For in these two uh, uh, two methods, we try to estimate the inflation factor for for PF and also for uh, for R. So this is a very famous uh, approach and uh, largely used in in data simulation. So the, another one uh, which is also nice, I should have put lag innovations with an S here. Sorry, uh, is is try to see. Now the innovation at uh, different times and the, the statistics of the lag uh, innovation. So basically, um, it is uh, so here. You see, you remember it's exactly the same. We have the, the, the covariance of the of the innovation, classical innovation, and here we are also computing the cross uh, covari covariance uh, between innovation at time t, uh, k, and k minus one, for instance. And if you compute that, you will find this uh, this uh, uh, this expression. And once again, you have uh, two uh, two equations with two unknown uh, uh, variables, Q and R, and uh, you are able to estimate Q and R. So I, I will not go into the details, but you have different impl implementation of that. I think a very nice one is is given by Berry and Sauer. They use only the lag one innovation, and um, and they have uh, quite good results uh, for the estimation of, of Q and R. So uh, I hope it's clear enough. So you, you, for the innovation statistics point of view, you have two methods. Uh, the first one is to use uh, different innovation, but in the observation space. Uh, and also here, and, and uh, here it's using lag innovation. So now I come back to uh, to the other family. Uh, so now it's based on on likelihood. So I will not um, I will not go into the details uh, into the Bayesian approaches. I think we had a lot of uh, lot of talks uh, dealing with that. Uh, so basically. Um, uh, we want to estimate the joint distribution of X, so the state of the system, and uh, our covariance matrices. So we use uh, the Bayes uh, theorism, and um, uh, we use uh, we use this uh, this approximation, saying that the, the PDF of Q and R uh, at time uh, uh, at time k are depending to to, to the last uh, observation. So uh, this, so and uh, we have also to put some prior uh, distribution on, on, on Q and R. So basically, uh, it's impossible to get because Q and R are very high dimensional uh, in data simulation. So uh, basically, we use a parametric form for for Q and R. So we we put uh, uh, the parameters for the diagonal term and also for the the spatial uh, correlation lens. And uh, so these are the, the different um, uh, different papers using data simulation to do that. I think this technique and uh, is the computational cost of this technique is is very high and in in real data simulation problem. And uh, we have still some problem to estimate 
to estimate these Q and R matrices using uh, this technique. But we can talk about this uh, uh, later.